Hey, good evening everyone. I'm Mike Curry. I'm the chairperson for the Board of Selectmen. Um, this evening is your all boards meeting. Um, we say we call it the all, all boards meeting, but I realize that we've got committees, we've got commissions, we've got councils, we've got all kinds of groups of people that uh, whether it's your daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly job, we're all taking care of the citizens of, of Templeton, Otter River, East Templeton, and Baldwinville. So a little history on um, why we have the all boards meeting. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, I believe it was on Mr. Kaplis, you were uh, on the select board back when the, the all boards meeting started. I was. So they, we needed a way to basically compare notes, to talk about our successes, to talk about our challenges, and we really thought that meeting in the holiday time frame, right before budget season, would be a good time to kind of gather together and and really have, you know, have a snack. Uh, we, we held it before at, at Camelot uh, with the Royers hosting us, which has always been great. Um, but it, it's, it's really an informal time so we can actually go through and meet each other. A lot of new faces. We've got uh, volunteerism it, it is always a changing thing in Templeton. So we try and get together to be able to, uh, to talk about the issues and the successes that we've had. Um, so before we get uh, started with, uh, I have slides that drive it. Now the slides, I'm not slide happy, but last year we were remote. And the, the way that we needed to kind of drive the process, we used Zoom for the people that uh, uh, joined us, and then we used slides to kind of show uh, what the mission of each of the boards, committees, councils, commissions were, and the people um, as best as we could uh, put it up on the screen. Sometimes the, the, the website doesn't have uh, a, like a last minute change or otherwise, but uh, if your name is spelled wrong up there, you can, you know, I'm the one who put them together, you can yell at me. So I'd like to start off by, uh, with the Pledge of Allegiance as we do all of our boards, committees, councils, and commissions. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. So this evening I'll be your, your master of ceremonies. I'll kind of tr drive the process, um, kind of bring us through the slides, really do the work for us because uh, we're all here to talk to each other, not just listen to me uh, blab on about how much we love the town. Um, so here is our agenda. Um, the select board's kind of got the, the, the anchor portion of the, of the, uh, of the evening. Um, so welcome everybody. It is really good to see you. It, it, and see your faces as well. It's all. It's. Uh, it's been a long haul the past 18 months. Uh, we're still trying to get through it. Uh, Lori went in and the Board of Health. Um, Jane, they're trying to help us through it to negotiate to try and, and figure out policy and otherwise. Uh, hopefully, there's a light at, at the end of the tunnel if we keep doing the right things. Um, meeting protocol. Like I said, it's it's a little bit um, informal, or maybe a I should put it the other way. It's a little bit formal just because we're gathered together. We've got TCTV uh, recording this and otherwise, but this is really meant as an informal event where we can uh, talk with each other. That's not to say that uh, we might disagree on something, so we try and keep it in a talking uh, way. Um, I'll reserve the right to kind of, I don't, I have my cell phone over there, I can whack that against the table, but, uh, in, in times past, we've had a couple disagreements. We just try and keep this professional, a professional meeting and that everybody's opinion is, uh, is respected and we hear people out. Um, so really that's all I got for meeting protocol. Actually, I think, yeah, I wind up talking about that. Um, boarding, uh, boarding committee acknowledgements. I just want to see who's here tonight. We'll do that. A slide will help us uh, do that. Um, the select board will uh, make a presentation about some of the things that uh, we've encountered over the past 12 months since we've last uh, uh, joined together like this. And then we're gonna hear from you. We're gonna hear from the, the people that are here from the boards and committees that uh, took their Monday evening. Um, unfortunately, I heard that the Patriots are playing tonight. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry for that, but thank you for being here. Um, so really the format for uh, whoever wants to speak or anybody that wants to speak from the board committee council or commission, mm -hmm. um, your mission will be up on the screen if you want to make any changes. Tell us about the people that you've had, um, any achievements, and when I say the way forward, I always try and be 
positive. It's it's our way forward. We have challenges and otherwise. Um, someone was talking to me about the roof of the senior center as we walked in the door. We've got challenges and it's trying to match the resource of the people with those challenges. So if you've got a way forward that you'd like to talk through, we'd love to hear about it. We'll, we'll culminate with an open forum. If there's something that we, uh, that we all want to talk about, like the great tree lighting uh, ceremony this year in all, uh, a variety of different places around Templeton, we can talk about that or any issues, but it'll be an open forum. And then we'll adjourn. Um, I, I'm lying about the streaming, but uh, we do have a recording tonight, so uh, your family, your grandchildren, uh, your significant other can watch you uh, on TCTV. That's always a lot of fun. Look, I'm on TV. Um, appropriate language. Um, I just want to, again, keep things professional. Um, I think probably raising a hand is the best way that we can probably... You, the, the, the conversation can get to the point where someone will try and interject a, a point or an issue or something. We just want to kind of keep that to a minimum. Raise your hand if you want to uh, signal to the person that you've got something about that. Um, so just, just try not to talk over people, especially for the cameras. It makes it very difficult for those watching at home. Um, and it's a public record, meaning uh, this will be on TCTV. We're here in this public forum, so uh, the best way to get your uh, your constituents to see you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take a seat. All right, do we have anyone uh, from the advisory committee tonight? Yes, you do. Oh. We're, we're just acknowledging I'm right just now. moving. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the corner. I don't okay. want to put okay. the baby in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Kaplan. Yes. Agricultural Commission. Board of Assessors. There's a lot to talk about a board of assessors tonight, so maybe we'll, we'll fill in the blanks uh, when we get to their slide. Board of Health. Cable TV Advisory Committee. Yay, it's Steve over there in the corner. He needs people, so talk to him afterwards. <laughs> Capital Planning Committee, by show of hands. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Cemetery and Parks Commission, or Cemetery Commission. Community Preservation Committee. Preservation, I thought it was, yeah. he, he, the other guy should have been here. <laughs> I, well, thank, I, I appreciate you being here, George. Conservation Commission, again. Uh, that's me again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Council on Aging. Fantastic. Thanks for being here. Library Board of Trustees. Great to see you, sir. Uh, Planning Board. Recreation Commission. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Select Board. We're all here. They're excellent. Uh, Senior Center Oversight Committee. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk briefly about that, but uh, that has been dissolved as of the last town meeting. Uh, Sewer Commission. I'm here. Hey, Mark. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Templeton Cultural Council. Any reps? Yay! Um, and Zoning Board of Appeals. All right. Well, I think we've got a quorum. We've definitely... And, and I'm sorry. I did not put it up there. The school district. But he's got his own slide. So <laughs> you do? You do. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Casimir. All right. So... Welcome everybody. Um, we are back to in-person um, all boards meeting, which is a great thing. It's really nice to be able to share some food with you, um, to see everybody's faces, and this is the way where we wind up having real conversations or otherwise, um, and not shouting at each other that, you're still on mute, you're still on mute. Um, I would say we're probably going to be here for about an hour. Um, certainly if uh, people have some issues w uh, when we get to their slide and they have a presentation or something, maybe we go over a couple of minutes. Um, but I will say the last time we met here in 2019, the people that stay the longest get the most pizza going home. <laughs> and like I said, uh, this is an open and professional <coughs> environment. I'm sure you so I was recently, I, um, I work at Hanscom, I work for the Air Force, and one of the women that I work with, I just uh, switched jobs, she is a select board member in AIR, and I think she, you know, I said, oh, I'm, in this, I'm on the select board in Templeton, and um, I think she wanted to, to, to find out what we do or otherwise. She went over to our website, and she saw that we had a town mission statement, 
And if you weren't aware uh, that we had this, that's why I put this in the slide deck and you see it up on your screen right now. She thought it was fantastic that there is a consolidated, very open way to say, we, we the government, exist for the people. Um, and I really do mean it to sound um, you know, like one of our, our, our founding documents. We exist to help our community. And this, this mission statement was written to make sure that uh, you know, if we ever get lost on an issue or otherwise, we can remind ourselves um, what, what it is that we do in this community. So we worked on this um, on the select board. And that's uh, the, one of the first things that you see when you're spying on Mike Carey. I'm sorry, go looking at the uh, looking at our town website. Board of Health. Board of Health? Board of Health? I'm sorry, I did not work. I already sang your praises, too. I already mentioned you by name, Jane. Grab your pizza. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yep, we got some pizza too. So, um, worst part about slides, if you're if you're uh, used to slides, you never read them. So, you get, uh, all but one person, and we'll make sure that one person gets them. That that is your town mission statement. Okay, uh, your select board been on since 2019. Tim, came on board 2020. Currently serving as the vice chair. Jeff Bennett since 2019. Terry Griffiths, 2019. Clerk. And um, Jeff sometimes is a little bit modest, but uh, this is definitely not his first rodeo. Um, Tim has been on several uh, several committees. He's been on advisory and a return member. Um, I think the only reason he left before is because of the service in Afghanistan. Yep. Um, so Jeff is um, is one of our senior members, and not here tonight is Julie Richard. Although we do uh, expect to see her on Wednesday, and she is in her third term. Um, on the next slide, uh, I want to just go ahead and put that up. You, you can't read it, but if you take a look at a lot of the, the documents that the select board puts out uh, in budget time, um, our retreat, we meet. And from a comprehensive year to year by fiscal year, we come up with what are we trying to do? What were we elect? What you know? What platforms did we think about when we came in and when we 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 were elected? And we use this document that you see here. It used to be two pages. That's a good thing. That means we knocked it. We uh, checked the block on a, on a bunch of things within the last two or three years. But we use our select board goals. Not only to kind of check ourselves to say what 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 are we going to focus on, but we take this, we sign it, we all, all we all vote it in, and we hand it to the town administrator, Adam Lamontagne, and he uses this as a key document in developing the budget for the town. So if we are um, one of the ones, I know the, the laser won't show up on the thing, but near the top, it's not like you can read it anyway, unless you're, you've got some binoculars. Um, ARPA funds. We, in this last year, we wanted to develop a plan to make sure that we were integrating, understanding first, um, and, and Tim might have a couple words to say about that. Tim's been kind of our, our resident expert on trying to chase the, uh, the tail of ARPA funds. But th that is up in our goal, and then Adam receives that to say, I'm now going to integrate and make sure that the, those ARPA funds, if you're not familiar with ARPA funds, American Rescue Act. American Rescue Plan Act. Thank you. Yep. So that's all of the, 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 um, the money coming from the federal government uh, in COVID. And we're right on top of um, a, probably a new set of money for reconstruction now that the Build Back Better, and I forget what the first one was that passed, but basically earmarked for infrastructure, jobs, infrastructure. Um, sometimes it's, it's hard to relate national goals or national things that are happening to your local government. Well, this is one of those times we can actually do that. Um, and it, you know, Dr. Kazimit may talk about how that's impacted their capabilities at the school district level as well. Um, but these goals are very important to us. Uh, we try, again, we try and go back to them to, 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 to like a litmus test or a, a check on learning to make sure that we're, we're following what we, we say. Say what you do, do what you say. Um, and then we've got our policies at, uh, as well. I've got one other slide that we can speak to, but um, I'd like to hear from the rest of the select board on goals or policies. Oh, for me, real quick. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for the kind words. I do not consider myself an expert on ARPA. I'm trying to stay on top of it. It is a moving target. 
the information that's pouring out National League of Cities, <coughs> the Treasury Department, some other federal organizations, sometimes contradicts itself. Big surprise when we're talking the federal government. If anybody really has some issues falling asleep, send me an email. <laughs> I will gladly share 380 plus pages of information that's in like eight point font and I guarantee you, about 20 minutes, you're going to be snoozing. <laughs> um, there are some exciting things coming. We did s receive some notification through Senator Gobi's office that the state is in the process of approving an additional ARPA outlay. At the federal level, they're talking another $4 billion with a B. We just don't know how they're going to break it out, where it goes. The key right now is what meets the requirements. And the reason we're being cautious on spending ARPA funds, since it's published and uh, overseen by the United States Treasury, if we spend it and it was done illegally, right away the Treasury is going to sit there with their hand out saying, give it back. So we want to make sure we do this right, dot the I's, cross the T's. The reporting has been pushed out to April. We received the first of our $2.4 million this, at the beginning of the fiscal year. The next payment is currently <coughs> slated for May of 2022. So watch this space, it will continue to change. Yeah. And that's our money, like not <coughs> just one office or, or otherwise, that is for a community to decide. We get that we have the ultimate vote in that. There are guard, the guidelines like Tim is saying, but in terms of, like I was saying earlier, matching a resource to a problem we got some problems. It's, there is a potential here to match those resources, and I'm very excited about the uh, the infrastructure money that's coming behind it. Uh, just one quick thing. Uh, I'm probably more than a little rough around the edges, but I do hear things and I do listen. And I've been on another project going through all the towns of uh, the Commonwealth uh, looking for a particular thing, but I've also noticed that there are a number of towns that have uh, a committee and board handbook that has a lot of guidelines for different committees and, and so forth because we're a, uh, we're a governance by committee. Uh, and this is just an idea and I'm, I'm just looking and grabbing ideas. I'm, I'm, not write, I'm, I'm not writing anything. I'm taking ideas and, and stuff from other cities and towns that uh, at some point in time, sooner rather than later, I plan on approaching the Board of Selectmen and seeing how they feel about that, and hopefully we can put something together. So when you come to the Board of Selectmen, you get sworn in to get on most of the committees and, and boards and stuff. You can say, okay, you're on this, now here's your responsibilities, and here's where you find this information out, and these are the things you have to do in a certain time frame. Uh, so, again, that's, it's really in the early, I'm just put, grabbing books and looking at them and reading them, and at some point in time, uh, I will bring it to the board uh, to try to help out this governance by committee, because that's really what it is. It's, the Board of Selectmen are not, you know, the, the, the power brokers of the town. The Board of Health, the Planning Board, in some instances, have as much or more authority than the Board of Selectmen do. And I, sometimes I think that's lost. But it's mainly gauged for uh, all the other recreation, this one, this one, that's, there's a lot of rules and stuff you gotta follow, and it's just, it's a lot of reading. So, uh, that's it, so thank you. Yeah, absolutely, Jeff. Terry, anything? So, last week we voted, um, Adam presented to us, we voted to get uh, uh, someone to look at the opera funds and look at the needs of the town and, right, mm -hmm. we just voted that in, so it was $2,000 each. $2,000, $2,000, $5,000, depending on. Yep. And that'll come back and give us an idea of what we qualify for and what our needs are. Is that well, the that goal of that? If I can. Sure. Sure. So what we're doing right now, we received uh, $2.4 million, as Tim uh, just brought up. Uh, right now, we're determining the spending plan. And let's say right now, the, with the revenue replacement, we'll determine how much, let's say, out of that $2.4 million, they st with this uh, whole formula that we're having the auditors look at, and they determine $400,000, for example, is of lost revenue. Well, that $400,000 can be applied to general government services, 
and that other $2 million has to be for that eligible criteria that uh, <laughs> Selectman Toff just mentioned in those guidelines that need to be followed. So it, it helps us when the select board's going, a few, going through and reviewing all the documents on the ARPA request, mm -hmm. which ones that they're going to approve funding for, and let's say something that may not be eligible under the two million may be eligible under the four hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and that and the select board will ultimately decide how that money is spent. Um, it's a it's a, it's a the guidelines are continually coming out, um, and until we receive the two point four million, we still have time, and the funds need to be expended by fiscal year twenty twenty seven. Twenty twenty seven. So with that. Um, it's it's certainly something the select board's taking seriously, and we will proceed in that fashion. Um, so, to Terry's question, we're, it's going to help us determine the spending plan. Good job. And I had one more thing that I really. Um, so there was one more thing that I'm really interested in, especially since there's more funds coming down the pike, and it has to do with my respect to Mr. Noel Francis, who's now on the advisory committee, and his. Um, ability to write letters to our senator and Kong and you know mm -hmm. Senator Gobi and Rep. Whips and I hope I really can work with you. I'm trying to be sincere about as a select board my, myself in particular getting those letters out because I think the squeaky wheel gets the grease and uh, you do craft a beautiful letter. So Thank I you. hope we can work with you and you throw some letters our way and we can work with him and sign our names, you know, and any other board members that are interested because the more they hear from Templeton, you know, the more chance we have of getting the uh, funds we need. I agree. So it's just one avenue besides mm -hmm. ARPA is petitioning the... Absolutely. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Um, so ch before we move on, just a couple of... Uh, achievements in the big rocks that we're working on um, like I said when we started um, we are not taking our eye off of COVID-19 and, uh, and the emergency management that goes with it so Jane and the Board of Health and Lori Witta they've certainly got they, they still discuss it they still put out the, the um, all of the data almost on a, um, a daily basis for tracking um, but it's also the emergency management side of it with Rich Curtis and Kelly Pomprion, there's the money aspect as well. So with COVID, not only is it managing public health, but it's also managing those resources that come in um, from the reaction to that. So I think we've been doing a pretty good job of that. If you if you've been in town hall, you've noticed um, you know we've we've got we're working on vestibules. We've got um, uh, care items. Our, our food pantry in Jackie and now New Hope Bible Church. All of these different things, I think we've done a, a good job of trying to manage this crisis. Financial management and audits. Um, we continually knock down our material weaknesses within our audit. Every year, it's all, it used to be, ugh, audit is on the agenda. Now it's exciting because we get to talk about what, what are the good things that we're doing. Um, and we wind up getting kudos, we talk about our bond rating, things are looking up financially. Um, I think we're on track in the spring to have approximately two million dollars in our uh, stabilization account and our accounts. So this is something that we just have not been able to realize in the past and this is because we have a solid financial team with the stakeholders that pay attention. Our budget process has been successful. We use the omnibus budget process, but it's that uh, our chief financial officer, Adam LaMontagne, the town administrator, he basically takes his financial team, he works with all uh, the advisory committee, the, the, the select board, in a very regimented process to make sure that uh, we listen to our town um, committees, our town department heads to make sure that we're addressing the needs of the community and, and where any of the, sh the shortfalls can be uh, realized and then tweaked. Permits and licensing, Laurie Wood will, will tell you during, during our meetings, um, business is good. Unfortunately, it's mostly residential business. Uh, we're at 91% um, revenue from residential um, taxes 
and only 9% from businesses. So we got a little bit of a challenge there to try and, mm -hmm. and increase our revenue from businesses, not just the, the residents. But if you're driving around town, you're seeing projects. COVID seemed to be the time to do projects for people. So permits and licensing and new construction, we get an A plus within this last year. Insurance collaboration. We are working not only to reduce our insurance rates with MIAA as we have done within this last year, but we are working with a collaborative now or, or have that ability to work with a collaborative to increase our employee count, which then allows us to see financial data to make sure that we can go into the negotiating table for better insurance rates, which means less money that we have to put out um, uh, of, our, uh, of our taxation in our revenue. So insurance collaboration is working. In the Insurance Advisory Committee, um, I think we have one rep tonight. Holly, you're on the IAC, I'm correct? Not you're not You're not anymore. The IAC works very hard to try and make those recommendations. Town Administrator's Office, um, they really, they're flying at, at 30,000 feet, you know, so they're free to move about the cab cabin at this point. We've got a, um, we have sol a solid town administrator. He's been in this town for a, a while as, as the intern. He, he studied under a pro, and now we've got some stability in the town administrator's office. And we, as, as I say to the select board, we have a very solid team right now. Um, I already spoke to uh, construction and um, really from a residential perspective, but we're also taking a look at our own infrastructure. We're trying to get the designs and plans for our, our bridges that are failing. Um, most of you probably had to do the one lane bridge on the way over here. We're, we're taking a look at that. We're doing the design studies that are required for those collect, uh, construction prog, prog, projects. Uh, Scout Hall is, uh, we're, we're nearing the final stage for making that building minimally operationally um, available. It doesn't, you know, it, 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 in the grand scheme of things, we thought, you know, there'd be like trapezes and TVs and, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff in there. Right now, we just have to take care of that town property and make it minimally available so we can realize the, uh, the next evolution of Scout Hall. And finally, on demolition, um, Fall Town Meeting, we now have a revolving account to take care of problem properties in town. I think everybody's driven by uh, uh, Dunkin' Donuts and seen that, that house on Pleasant Street. That's exactly the target of this new initiative to make sure that we've got the money available to take care of problem properties, especially if they wind up having lead or asbestos problems. And folks, we have continued growth in this community. Don't let anybody fool you. Don't let social media tell you otherwise. There is continued growth in this community, and we have everything to be proud about, about being a Templetonian. Uh, or as uh, something uh, one of our, our members uh, came up with a while ago, we are Templeton Tough. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to turn over the mic now to the uh, to Dr. Casvan in the Regional <laughs> School District. Welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I'm glad that they sent this slide. I wish they would have told me what the slide yes. was when they sent it over, of course. But um, our mission, uh, they you know, didn't make it, Chris. I made it. It's oh, did you? Your, okay, they're going like, oh God, you what do they do to me? <laughs> uh, but our, you know, we're committed to providing a physical and emotionally safe learning environment um, that obviously that promotes academic success. Is what we are. We're a school. Create uh, responsible relationships and civic engagement. And you know, you guys obviously hear a lot from the schools, especially around budget time, but. To go back to the budget process, though, um, that was one of our major changes. Uh, I don't know if it's three or four years now. I forget. But we, we moved up the timeline considerably of when, we, when we present, basically, the budget. Before, it was, I think, March. Um, it was as late as March, and that <clears throat> was problematic. And so now, you know, and folks received the, uh, the invite, but we've... Uh, a tri board. We have a joint board between Phillipston and Templeton, and um, it's really where we kick things off. So the, the budget is um, in the hands basically of the towns a lot sooner, by about almost two months, um, I think, uh, than it was a previous. And that was a big that was a big shift for us um, in terms of because uh, we don't really have the state numbers at that point, but we've done a pretty good job with that. Um, Esser monies. Uh, and ARPA monies and all of those things, uh, you know, it could fill days of conversation. Um, 
you know, I stood before the, you know, the, at least the Templeton um, town meeting and was worried that Esther two funds were going to be, you know, uh, we use it for the minimum local contribution. Mm -hmm. I remember a gentleman said, do you think it's a smart move? And I said, no, I don't. I don't think it was, a, you know, I, I just traditionally don't feel that utilizing those type of funds and especially with the conversation that was happening with ESSER funds at the time, because uh, it was, it, some said they were going to be able to be used, some said it didn't, and ultimately it came down. Both towns voted to use the funds um, to offset the minimum local contribution and then turned around and said, no, you can't do that. Um, and that, that was what we were all uh, worried about in the end, because once the FY happens, uh, you know, you you're stuck for example for, for lack of a better word so you know we we communicated with the uh, uh, town administrator and said uh, well they said that we can't utilize that anymore and spoke to a couple of members and said what are you going to do and we certainly did, we did not approach of course the towns to uh, come up with another number because that's how it would have had to we would have had to recertify um, and so ultimately we're gonna have to wait till our version of free cash our E and D is certified, which we're waiting for the state to do that to see what it comes back, and then we'll we'll talk about that. But we've been in conversations about ARPA funds. Um, we've talked to a lot of school districts, mostly out a little eastern part of the state. Uh, mostly, um, they ha have used uh, or been allowed to use ARPA funds for projects. Um, and again, we have I have formally asked at some point to have a conversation with everyone about potentially using ARPA funds to offset those minimum local contributions amounts because, you know, again, we're in the middle of the FY and they've kind of pulled the rug out from under us, so to speak. And again, we this is not for this meeting. It, it could go on forever. Um, but the goals that we're going to set for that, um, those requests, uh, quite frankly, whether they happen or not, um, are capital improvement projects that would otherwise be the burden of the member towns. So for example, uh, and I'm only talking about the regional now, I'm talking about the regional middle high school building, but you know, if we were to redo the roof, and eventually that'll be something, or the parking lots, I, I, you know, again, these are capital improvement projects that would have to go before both towns, maybe potentially, depending on how they were to fund that, um, would increase taxes. Those are the kind of kind of things that I spoke to Adam about that we would, I'd like to have a conversation about about keeping it off from the from the taxpayers than utilizing the monies that may be available through the various different um, tranches of money that have, have flown or uh, just flowed into towns. So again, we understand there's a process. We also understand there's a lot of need, but um, that'll be something that'll that will come up uh, coming summer. Summer programming was a huge huge request last year. Um, we did not have the. We did not have this, uh, the space to do it. I know that sounds odd because we had requirements based on COVID at the time. Again, looking at what ARPA could do or whatever the tranches of money that allowable will allow us to do is that I'd like to expand our summer programming for our parents um, because that is definitely a need in our community. Um, but it takes, of course, resources and time, etc. Special education program, especially at the elementary school. Um, you know, kids came back. Well, th you know, you've seen it before, but if you were a kindergartner in March of 20, you came back to school for the very first time as a second grader. Um, many kids, many, 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 well, one third of our elementary kids did not come back during last year. They stayed remote um, and they came back. That, that has ran it does it has ramifications or it's it's proven to have ramifications and we, we've utilized that for three monies uh, to offset some of those or try to build programming around that to quote unquote catch them up so yeah <laughs> we talk about obviously you know all the environmental and the civic engagement it's amazing how much of it really does depend on money um, we know that um, we know that there's there's not a lot of it and so we have to make smart decisions um, we made some very tough decisions two years ago, quite frankly, um, by combining into one elementary school. The RAC committee of the regional agreement uh, committee still is plugging along, and I think that those are the, the important discussions as we move forward in terms of um, how monies are allocated, etc. But beyond all that, we are finally back, <laughs> and we're happy to be back. 
we're happy to have the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts come and use our facilities because that's what a school should be able to do. We have our rec basketball programs. We have our, um, uh, well, basketball, obviously, um, going into one of our gyms. We've had to expand our gyms into cafeterias because we had such a, um, a tough go at of it with uh, COVID being COVID spread that we had to we had to space the kids out um, accordingly because we were we were way up on our numbers at the beginning that is now thankfully um, tapered off so we just like getting back into the business of doing what we've done before um, support the community however we can um, be part of it we have a lot of Christ we have a lot of holiday um, programming out there our, we've put out invitations for our uh, senior. A lunch, um, and uh, we're we're slowly getting some um, some RSVPs to that. Um, we've uh, we're helping our kids that may may not have a, a, a very good holiday or may have difficulties, you know, with or parents with difficulties with supporting their kids um, during the holidays, and we we have that program going as well as supporting the food bank and the food drives, etc. So that's the great part about being back. Um, it's because that's what that's what school's about, um, among all the other things. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll as always we'll we'll have we'll have a conversation and we'll we'll figure it out as we go forward. Thanks, Dr. C. Any questions for Dr. C? Yes. Are you go going ahead, to start Mary. doing the the walking again inside the school? <clears throat> We're going to try. Um, I, matter of fact, that got brought up today. Um, we believe that, of course, we can. That's not the issue. But if we have children in the building, <laughs> we might have to require masks. Um, so uh, if I think that's as simple as that. And if there aren't kids in the building, which, by the way, the only way there'd be kids in the building at night would, of course, be if it was rec basketball utilizing the middle school gym. Um, and so I think that that would cover all criteria one way or another. So I believe that's um, we, we were it was just brought to my attention today. and. I don't see a problem with it, quite frankly, as long as we do the sign-in like, we, like we've like done all the stuff that we did before, but we potentially may have to wear masks if kids are in the building um, at the same time as our walkers. And how are you going to get it out to the public? Well, we have a brand new, do anybody see the flashing sign? I mean, we didn't even bring up the it. flashing sign. It's really nice. <laughs> it's nice. Well, we're going to communicate through the towns and through the senior center, um, and like we did, again, I almost have to go back two years, right? But. Um, about putting that, blasting that information out the way that we can, um, ha you know, have the towns help us do that um, as well. Because generally we don't use our one call to do that because we're not probably hitting the right group right. who right. might be walking, quite frankly. So that when we did have our walkers, we uh, contacted the seniors, the towns helped us out, and we're Facebook, word of mouth, um, and now our flashing sign. We'll so we'll sure be able to, uh, we'll yeah, sure uh, TCTV, of course, I'm sorry. You know, try to put something up on there as well. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Dr. C. I love the initial message. It's that this is a sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know who put that up there because that sounds awfully sarcastic. But um, oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. It um, looked cute when you drove by. Yeah, it was like, so we, yeah, take it. Yeah. Yeah, we are coming uh, into uh, <laughs> to winter time, so um, I, I am looking forward to if, if there's a no school. If if you haven't seen Dr. C's uh, no school uh, announcements, yes, yeah. they mm -hmm. are. Epic. No, oh, there's something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, again, getting back into school, right? So uh, that's that's what we're really focused. We, we, I just love the kids being in there. It was just really, it's really great to see them in school and having them all there, or, or many of them there. Um, uh, and so we're just going to keep plugging around. They've done a great job, um, our teachers and staff. So yeah, yeah I'm, pr I'm pretty proud of them. We appreciate our school mm -hmm. district and, and, and the, the, the solid. For, um, communication and mm -hmm. collaboration that we that's improved a lot time. since the beginning I really think has. and that's 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 yeah. something to be proud of all of heard the band last night they yeah. sounded great everyone yeah. sang along that's great I just had a quick question <clears throat> yeah. okay how's morale I've been watching the news and some uh, districts are some of the principals and hmm. are over overtired and canceling school to give everybody a mental health day I just how's well, the district doing I I don't think that this superintendent would do that. I mean, unless it really got horrible. I mean, because I again, I think that you're treading on some. I'm just being honest, as I try to be all the time. I think that mental health is very, very important, and we've, quite frankly, have some very concerning issues mental health, um, especially at the um, elementary level. Mm -hmm. I don't think people. I know that people get it, and I know that people believe it because they have either kids or they have grandkids, um, at that late at that age level. I have never. I. 
I've been around a while. I've worked in a lot of districts, um, of residential, et cetera. Um, we have uh, quite a few kiddos whom are just having a real tough time acclimating back. Um, and it, and it, so that, it, that takes a lot of, it takes a lot of energy. Um, I think that what we're trying to do, and I, I try to remind folks, that, and I, a few folks were there when I did my opening speech, this year truly is, of course it's academic. Of course we're worried about, we're trying very hard. We have a lot of resources and trying to uh, get the kids up to speed. This is, we're worried more about their mental health. Uh, I, I mean that, and our staff. Uh, it, it is, uh, again, I don't, I cannot compare it to other areas. I don't know how the police have handled the fire. I'm, I'm being, but with kids, it's different. Um, with when you're when you're a teacher, it's different. There's a lot of angst sometimes. There's a lot of happiness, a lot of joy. But boy, when it's when things aren't going well, it sets a bet. It's 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 tough. So it is. It's very tiring. Mental health days are important. I think we need to do that during the. In other words, there's a lot of things that we can do to help our uh, teachers' mental health along with our kids' mental health. I thought you were going to ask about t a time a days off or calling these sick days because of lack of staff. That's a real possibility. You've seen me all. At, I know. I know you have, and you're probably sick of it. Asking for substitutes, and we we have never had trouble finding teachers here in Narragansett. This district has a, a very good reputation. We have usually teachers uh, want to work here. Subs like to work here. Our kids are well behaved. This has been the hardest I have I, to find kindergarten teachers, folks. With all due respect, is it's that's a that's a easy that's a big pool. It's early childhood. You can uh, finding good ones are hard, right? But you can find someone that you can mold. We've had, we posted for almost two and a half months for a kindergarten teacher. I've never posted two and a half months for a kindergarten teacher my entire career. At any, at any point in the year. Never mind, you know, so they're either, I don't know where they are. I don't know, no, but just in general, um, I, I don't know. And we're having trouble filling those, those spots. We have filled them, but subbing is really, really tough. And that's what I'm worried about. How about this preschool? Bachelor, bachelor's in a Cory check? Pretty much, yes, but to sub, to sub, you don't need a bachelor's necessarily. Just, you know, a, a, you know someone sells sick for the day yep. and to call in a sub. Those type of things, those are the, that's what I worry about the most because, yep. quite frankly, with quarantine and other, you could have four. If, if you're watching in our building, there, yeah. if you're watching, hopefully they'll leave her. Yeah, come yeah. on and teach at the yeah. school. Corey yeah. Jack, that's it. Yeah, but we do have to worry about it because we do, again, back to mental health, teachers are, are burnt out because it's it's been a lot. It's been a lot. It's been very saturated, especially at the youngest levels, and I'm and I'm concerned about that. Do we ever do anything? Do you, does our district do home visitation? I just finished a book that, and I told mm -hmm. Mr. Kaplis that for every dollar spent on home visitation, it was written here in Boston by a doctor, um, and he said that for the the economists project that for every dollar spent on early intervention, home visitation, preschool programs. It's a seven dollar savings on um, incarceration, drug addiction, um, welfare. The kids that they followed for 20 years uh, graduated high school and went on to college and got good jobs and brought revenue into mm -hmm. the community. So we do home visits when it's necessary. We don't yeah. generally do them as a as a part of the uh, I'll say the typical day. Yeah. Um, you know, we do wellness checks. We have a very good relationship with uh, Templeton PD, so thank you, Templeton PD. Um, not just our um, resource officer, the, the, the whole day crew are very good, and our fire department. So they're always there for us, and I, I'm not just saying that. They, they've been fantastic. So when we've needed to reach out, we've done those type of things, but not on a day-to-day yes. -day basis. Not in like a poor no. community. Thanks, Chris. Let's take one yep. more question before we move on. Uh, just one quick thing. Uh, back on the kids mm. and we're not going to get in front of TV without me saying this. Uh, there are three veterans that sit on the board of selectmen and I'm aware of at least five veterans sitting here tonight. I don't know if, the, uh, if there's any other ones here. Uh, in case you have not heard of, you've missed it. Uh, the fifth grade class of Narragansett did a project where they all made cards for veterans for Veterans Day. Some of them made it to the board of selectmen's meeting. Uh, and we read them and looked at them, and I was, uh, I will speak for myself, I was, uh, the kids pushed a button on me. Uh, we acknowledged it. Uh, the board uh, agreed we got a certificate of appreciation. Uh, we got it framed. 
uh, I was privileged to go over to the school, meet some of the kids. There's 125 or so mm -hmm. kids, and yep. we, we went at 8 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday. I would have loved to have met all of them, but uh, I was privileged, I think, to meet a small group of them. And uh, we got a picture with the kids and showed them the frame. And uh, myself, Mike, and Tim, uh, we said, you know, told them about what we thought, their project. And through our veteran service officer, those cards have gone to the local legion, other American legions, they went to the disabled American veterans, they went to a veterans administration hospital. Uh, them kids, they probably don't realize what they did and the impact they had. Uh, certainly, they, they hit a chord with me, and I wasn't letting Chris leave here without acknowledging those kids. They, uh, they did a fantastic job, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to forget them. We love our veterans. Yeah. Uh, they, they, we love our veterans. Um, we have uh, this. I've been in many districts, and I've never met. A, I've never been in a district that really embraces um, veterans more than than in, in Narragansett. And I'm being serious about that. Um, it's it's definitely ingrained. So um, they were, of course, in awe of of, of the company that they were in um, last week. So, um, but we'll hopefully have our wonderful Memorial Day program in the gym, which of course, as it, if folks remember, that's it's a pretty big event. So mm. thousand, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but, you know, have a super spreader event, but we'll see what we can do. But we'd like to get back to that, obviously, but thank you. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Thanks, Jeff, we really Thanks, appreciate Chris, yeah. that. All right, right, Jeff, before we, we go into our, our, our boards, committees, councils, and commissions, I want to just recognize that that's not it. There are, we have our entire community partner list. And up on the screen, I've got local businesses right up front and, and, and center. Um, they have been amazing for us during um, this last year and uh, the, all of the time that we've been dealing with COVID. So a shout out to our local businesses. All of our municipal offices, that's everybody. Um, you know, Jackie is here from Community Services. Uh, thank you for everything that you've done during this last year. The, the light and water plant, um, they, they, um, we have a new development services vehicle because they're part of our, they're part of our, 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 our stakeholders, our team. Um, so a shout out to our entire municipal team, our legislative team, um, which is changing. If you have, weren't aware that from redistricting, um, we, we lose representative whips, uh, Susanna whips, and we gain rep uh, representative uh, Mr. Zlotnick. Um, so we will be meeting with them January I think coming up this week we have a, at least a coordination meeting but we're, we're going to be meeting with that legislative team uh, shortly at least to talk well right there's the kickoff and then there's just a, a, a hello just a, an acknowledgement of that transition meeting in January. yep okay so uh, to our legislative team our neighboring towns and businesses, um, that, like we deal with a lot of gardener businesses, we deal with our, our neighboring towns on a consistent uh, basis. Our, our public safety team knows this. We have our, um, it's not EMAC, it's uh, our, our coordination. If we have to cross lines or otherwise, we uh, mutual aid, mutual aid agreements. Um, our faith-based communities and our churches in Templeton, uh, it, it has, truly been heartwarming seeing how we have come together as a team to work with our faith-based communities. Um, I, I couldn't even single out one or two. I know I did earlier with the food pantry, which is amazing, but uh, definitely want to recognize them as part of our team. And then all of the non-government organizations, uh, that's our nonprofits, our veteran-based organizations, community action groups, and last but not least, yes, they're out there. Our social media groups have been excellent. Um, they, they provide the criticism and our left and right boundaries, and they let us know what's going on, and they work together to make sure people gather. Um, I won't call her out on the spot, but there was the Scarecrows on the Common was from a social media group, and that was fantastic. That became a town-sponsored event that originated from some ideas that gener were generated from a social media group. So we definitely don't turn a fly eye to that. It is a source of mostly strength and uh, communication. So I just want to acknowledge them before we go into our boards, commissions, committees, and councils. Uh, again, if, you, if, if I call, uh, when you see your 
your uh, your organization pop up on the screen. It's your. It, this is your 15 minutes or fame or less than 15 minutes at this point. Right? The, 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 the Patriots on our eight. Um, so whatever you'd like to cover, if challenges or otherwise, um, if, even if you want to just redirect or have a question, um, that's really all we're asking. We're trying to achieve here tonight. Um, do we have anyone from the Board of Assessors? No, I don't think we did. So Board of Assessors is hard at work. Uh oh, <laughs> gotta make sure it's plugged into the right. Um, it's plugged into that power strip, but it looks like it probably needs to be plug plugged into something else. I think Tim can help us. The Board of Assessors' power is running, running low. <laughs> no, uh, I spoke about um, they they came and uh, they we, we set the tax rate, or at least we went excellent. Um, we talked about the tax rate, um, which I believe is slightly lower this year. But the alarming thing that the Board of Assessors wanted to uh, make aware to us, um, we already talked about it, is that just the abnormally high residential uh, tax revenue at 91%. Um, Mr. Brooks had said in that meeting we, we should really be trying to drive that number down. Uh, so I guess that was the challenge that he gave um, just to, so we could kind of uh, repeat it here. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Fred Henshaw is the chair. Um, I think they've had a lot of rotations or otherwise. That's a, a lot of what I pulled, I pulled from the website. And so if there's a change or a spelling, like I said, we'll take the note to make sure that it's, uh, we know that not all boards committees um, have access to their, their web page. So I know that you re rely on the town. So thank you very much, Board of Oppressors. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will never, you know, ever. <laughs> The board of selectmen meeting. You know I'm at least good for one of those meetings. <laughs> I know the email. <laughs> yep, the email is going to be on fire. Board of assessors, thank you so much for what you do. Gardner News. Here we go. Jane, help me out. <laughs> Well, board of Health, this, I think we're fortunate to have a pretty well-rounded board, um, one health care, one excavator, one teacher, and we're honored, all of us are honored to serve the community. We're fortunate, more fortunate, to have a health director, Lori, who's always busy with inspections, park tests, reviewing Title Fives, noise and trash complaints, septic permits, loans, abandoned property initiative, and a lot more. Um, at the forefront, I think we've been very transparent with the weekly COVID updates. She works with the state health department and all departments in town to inform Templeton residents and to keep them safe. Um, other things that we do, for example, would be take drug take back days with the Templeton Police Department, vaccination clinics with the school nurses, um, noise control. We've worked with the police department and the agricultural committee. Um, we've been proactive in regards to the textile law that's going to come into effect in 2022. So if you haven't seen mm. them, note the collection bins for textiles at the town hall. Um, we are working to hold future hazardous waste and bulky waste days again, and we always have the Winchington Transfer Station that's open to us as well. I told Laurie I think she's the queen of cooperation, <laughs> communication, and collaboration. We are very fortunate to have her. Um, that's it. I love that. Here, here. She's amazing. She is. So. She is. She's I know amazing. all the we can do without her. Yeah. 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 She does way more. I'm going to have yeah. to give her a scepter or something. Remember, she's yeah. a queen. She's a queen. <laughs> Jane, thank you. Jane, thank you very much. Any questions for the Board of Health? All right, great. Thank you very much. See how I didn't rename you, your board. <laughs> 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 Council on Aging, glad to see you here tonight. I hope I got the names right on on the screen. If you can see that, but uh, what would you like to talk about? Well, we want to say we're very grateful for all the support from the town. Um, we have a wonderful staff here. Unfortunately, we lost one just recently, and the volunteers. We've had some wonderful volunteers who've been trying to fill in and other things. Uh, during the pandemic, we had a lot of drive-through activities. Pick up a craft kit or a lunch. Um, they worked very hard to put those things together. We we're very grateful to be able to be reopened. Um, we, we have a lot of activities going on here. We're not just recreational. So people who think, oh well, they're just there playing cards and 
plain bingo. That's not the case. We've had, we have um, educational programs. We have the electric companies giving talks. We've had talks on fall prevention. Uh, we have physical activities. There's a walking group, yoga, and a muscles class. Um, we have a lot of informational programs going on. We have a memory training class that's just finishing up. And the transportation has been very helpful for people in the town. Uh, medical transportation to appointments as well as to pick up groceries. A lot of people in town don't have vehicles and we have no public transportation here. So it's been really wonderful that they've been able to start that up again. Uh, we have connections to other agencies through our um, manager. We um, get people in touch with the um, food pantry and if they're in need of heat or um, medical assistance or just social activities. It's been wonderful. Um, Cindy related one uh, activity, one conversation she had with a woman who came in and um, she said, well, my husband says we can only have two meals a day. And of course Cindy was really upset about that. So she hooked the woman up with the food pantry in order to get more food for the family. Uh, we um, still have some problems to overcome, the roof, and a shortage of staff right now. Right. It's really difficult, it was difficult with three part-time people, but now with only two, it's really been very diff difficult to keep you know, everything going. Volunteers have been helpful, but they can't do it all. Yeah. Jan, I, th I think that's, uh, you know, that's a, um, Cindy had emailed um, out a little bit earlier today to talk about the staffing shortages. So whether it's availability or just the resources to make the, uh, make the availability work, that's something I think that uh, we can work with, with uh, Adam and Jackie to, to see what we, it is that we can do to match the resources so that all of your customer base is there and you know the need is there. We just got to try and help you meet that need so that we don't have someone that feels like they're, you know, oh, it, it doesn't look like anyone's there right now or something. That, that we're responsive to the needs of our community. So thank you for bringing that up as a challenge, Jan. Would high school seniors be an option? I'm sorry. Collaboration? Yeah. Would high school seniors be an option? For? Well, I, during the school day, I think they'd have to be volunteers. I don't think that they could be part tech savvy? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Well, yes. That way. That would be a big help all around. <laughs> and he is writing. <laughs> He's oh. writing. Fantastic. We we have hours that they have to. Many seniors have hours that they have they they must um, to be part of the honor society. So volunteer time. We. Yeah. How about if, okay. yeah. That, that's, yeah. that's a good one of the best things that happened this evening. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And may I make one more suggestion? Absolutely. We have two vans. They're it's they're almost booked during the day. I mean during like the school days, but during the summertime, unless depending on how the summer program works out, that might be an option. The one difficulty is finding drivers. Right, yeah. right now we're looking for a driver. So are the two white vans you got? Yeah, uh, yes, but I would think that maybe together we could find a way to pay someone to drive together, maybe. if yeah. need be. Because we're gonna need a lot of driving during the summer. Yeah. Kids, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. You know, blah, blah, blah. We could barter. I might <laughs> sub. <laughs> I'm a tired teacher. I might okay. consider it. Maybe right. yeah, we could talk about that at the town, if that's okay. Yeah, okay. I just make a point. Thank you. Paul. It's not the pay. It's just trying to get a driver that will take a part-time job and stick with it. Yeah. You know, yeah. that has the hours. Yeah. And so if anyone's out there that wants to be a driver. Yeah, part-time drivers. Yeah. TCT, Apply on our website. Yeah. Jan or Council on Aging, anything else? Thank you very much. Absolutely, thank you. That was that was huge. That I, just, was a, I do that have was a one thing. comment. I'd like to to thank the town for including the senior center in the in the lighting. I thought it was very nice to have other people come that aren't over fifty. <laughs> um, and I think the more that um, <laughs> the ages get together. Um, the more cooperation there will be when it comes to funding the high school, the senior center, the sports, because you get to see 
um, the other people and you realize they're human beings. Absolutely. Thanks for pointing that out, Mary. Very much appreciated. And um, is the uh, the rink up yet? Yeah. The the walls are up, but he he was talking about putting the top in. Yeah. But he's trying to wait till it gets cold enough yeah. to actually get water. Is it sixty freeze. degrees today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's that's, that's, that's a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And our own fire department's going to go down and fill it. Great. When the plastics in. What a team we are. Yeah. Planning board. <laughs> Um, planning board, I know, uh, meets. How often do they meet? Um, are they are they monthly right now? Bi monthly. Or okay. If okay. So we don't have any reps tonight, but um, I, I see them quite frequently on TCTV. Um, again, all of their agendas and any of the issues that they have, uh, you'll be able to find on uh, templetonma.gov and mytowngovernment.org. Library board of trustees. Good evening, sir. Present. <laughs> Present. <laughs> What's I'm, new? Uh, just so um, you know who I am, Mike, Mike Morgan. Mr. Morgan. Mm -hmm. I'm chairman of the trustees. So, we're doing well. At least my slide is right, so that's good. <laughs> and he's got a great librarian, that you, as you know. Yes. <laughs> he does well, keeps in track. And one of the best things we have, we now have a full board with John Henshaw added. So wow. that's very good. Um, the day to day, you would have to ask Jackie what's going on. <laughs> well, how's the roof working out? I think it's working out <laughs> right. well. And we got you some dedicated parking spaces this last year to make sure that there's always um, some space. I know that um, I, I saw the town was making sure that the, the handicap uh, spaces were marked properly so they could uh, see the, the proper uh, handicap spots. Uh, Mr. Capitalist. And the ramp. That was done by the town. That was awesome. That was yeah. good collaboration there. Yeah. Perfect. That was a great improvement because yeah. that was starting to deteriorate. Yeah, right. How many years I took to get that ramp in there for my kids? I'm sure a while. Fifteen. Yeah. What I love about the library is there's a new term um, from the Blue Marble Librarians Crew Communities. Um, it's about building um, social infrastructure through libraries and our library has a puzzle table and a war it's like a warming cell here there's a couch so it's set up for a social infrastructure where people can come they call it third spaces and it's not your home and it's not where you work but somewhere you can go gather in your community you know like and it's not a church but it, this is a third space a senior center where uh, pe people can get together and mm -hmm. uh, relax, or if it's an emergency, whatever, you know, because part of that whole package is um, the tighter knit your community <coughs> is, the more resilient they are in disasters and uh, COVID. And, and, you know, free Wi Fi, uh, computer, computer access. Yep, we uh, have that. It's come that a long is, way from. A number of years ago, we had a town administrator who said there was no need for libraries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And didn't think there was a purpose because people didn't read books. Uh, personally, I have about eight books stacked up in my house right now. I average probably one every other week. Uh, been an avid reader all my life, so libraries are very important to me. Uh, and because of the computer systems now, you can order online, it will be available for you. It's, it's extraordinarily simple. So. so libraries are, the crew is communities responding to extreme weather and it, there's a whole network across the globe of, they call themselves the Blue Bible Librarians mm -hmm. and again that's what I know, I, like I thought about it and I, I'm like that's exactly what they have in there, a nice warming place where you can go and have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. oh, I've seen the puzzle. The puzzle. <laughs> I don't know how far along it is right now, but I've seen the puzzle. It at least had the outside edges of it when I saw it last. Not to mention prime time. <laughs> <laughs> my grandkids when Jackie reads, so I brought my grandkids and we called it prime time. Nice. 
And, and this town administrator loves libraries. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope so. Thanks. <laughs> well, Michael, thank you very much. I very much appreciate you coming tonight. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure if we had met before, so I'm really glad to see you. No, we have not. It was great to meet you. Your partner in crime next to you. I have met him. <laughs> and me. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. Me. I'm nobody. <laughs> Everybody else I know. <laughs> Okay, hey, Zoning Board of Appeals. I know they were busy the other night. Um, we don't. Have, do we have anyone with us? No. Okay. Um, very busy. A um, lot of thought. A lot of uh, minutes in their last one being signed. But I can uh, definitely tell that they go through their research to make sure that um, not only law, but they also are very committed to making sure that businesses have a fair, uh, fair say as well. And in their last meeting, they 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 acknowledged that what they had before them was a tough one. Um, and they really have to be able to consider what's right for the community, what's legal, and then also what uh, what what is helping business in our town. So I, I I appreciate their level of concern when they're going through these issues. Agcom, anyone from Agcom here tonight? Mm -hmm. I forgot when we I forgot how many we had when we did our our, our round table. There were a couple of Adcom's oh. working on the rooster issue. Yeah. Jane, you want to talk about the rooster issue? She's like, I don't want to talk about the they rooster issue. No, I said we worked with them on a noise issue. <laughs> <laughs> we Carrie are working with them. Carrie from Colorado. Yeah, Carrie and um, David were here. Yeah. Or with at the Board of Health meeting working on that with us. So. Yep. A lot of familiar names on the Adcom. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Cemetery Commission? Busy. Yeah, um, and we I know we've got for when uh, parks come up, uh, we, we can talk about how uh, there's some some exciting uh, bylaw changes that are really going to solidify our, our capability. So the cemetery commission, one of the first things they did, I was driving home from the town offices and I saw a Pine Grove Cemetery sign. I'm like, what? How come I didn't see that driving there? Did they just put that in when I and I missed it on the way up? To the town offices, so I text Justice. I'm like, Justice, am I losing my mind? When did that sign go in? It really elevated the neighborhood. It's beautiful, and I'm very grateful they replaced that one down there. But it, it just elevated the whole Let's put a pic Patriot put a picture road. on our social media and get some. Uh, would, uh, just the, the the two cemetery commissioners that we have. Uh, I went to a couple of their meetings when they first met, and uh, one of them there was a failure to elect, so he was appointed by the board of selectmen. Uh, they went right to work and looked at what they had and what they needed to do and they got together with a, a company and they're, it's, it's still in the works of getting volunteers to clean up a lot of the old stones mainly in the first church at, at Templeton mm -hmm. out in the back there uh, a lot of them are slate and like, old granite marble type of stone you have to be very careful uh, that you don't wreck them when you're cleaning it up they were getting rid of uh, piles of brush and trees uh, the DPW was just down in there smoothing up some of the roads uh, they put in that granite sign at that cemetery they did another one at the other cemetery so they're, they're very focused on which has been lacking for a few years but they're very focused on the cemeteries and and what they want to get done uh, we got a grant for software so they can track the plots that they have and 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 keep up with the records and so forth so it, those two cemetery commissioners are, are focused and they're doing a lot of work and uh just right getting in. things done uh so that the i think it over time, within the next year, uh, you'll notice a lot of improvements in the town cemeteries because they really do have a lot of things. They, they have a lot of things to do. Where it's going to take time, but they're they're focused <coughs> in on it and uh, and just knocking them off one at a time. So, just as an informational thing, thank you. Great, absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, Mr. Craig. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I just wanted to say um, we did also just get that grant for the cemetery software, correct? For the um, yep. Yeah, we did just get that. So I just wanted to make mention of that, that we did that the Cemetery Commission, in conjunction with the Town Administrator's Office, looked for that project, um, looked for that software in order to make everything easier, considering some of that stuff was written like 200 years ago. <laughs> wow. yeah. Which is not, you know, words change over time. Um, 
but you know, uh, 33,000? Yeah. No one in my backyard can tell <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Justice. ComCom. ComCom, that's me. Okay. Um, <laughs> the first thing I need for you to do is realize you only have three members uh, for the last three months, mm. and you've got four up there. Oh, I'm in the resolution. I apologize. I, I, I tried. To, I went from the, oh, the meeting what? minutes. I, know, I, just, yeah. I, just, I apologize. So just to remind them, no, we need two people. Two people on the set. Is it up board. on our website? No, our board is very rough <laughs> to work at times, <laughs> and uh, you know we have to deal with the contractors from in town, out of town, out of state. But our biggest problem this year, basically, has been the rain. It has messed up a lot of the stuff that these people know they're supposed to be doing, but they ignore it and go do what they want. And we have to keep, I keep stopping by and you can't do this, you can't do that. And I had one call the police because they said I was harassing him. I was not. I was reminding him what he had to be doing, but I said, that's fine. We'll just live with that and just walk away. That's all I did. <laughs> okay, the biggest thing is we down in Baldwinville, we have we got the uh, Riverside um, yep. Conservation River, Area, yep. which uh, they're going to, we just signed the contract this month. They're going to be sat and work in, uh, well, it was April, and hopefully have it all finished by May. And that'll be great for that new housing project that they're putting at the school. So the older people that are going to be living there will have a place to go down, sit down, and there's all kinds of walking trails out there. They can go out and walk and stuff like that. Yeah, which they'll finally get that off our books from Con Con, but we've been dealing with that since 1915, uh, 2015, we've, and hopefully we'll get it all taken care of by the end of uh, May. Yep. That, that's the biggest thing. The other thing is, and it's, I, I know Jeff, this is something. I like this. You were mentioning about getting a program of what every committee does and stuff like that. There, how is it? How will it be possible to have all these new landowners who come in, not knowing what they can do, can't do, and then us having to go out there to say you can't do this, you can't do that. Something needs to be done for these people who buy these houses or who move into the houses that. Uh, they come in, I find, you know, they're, they're putting up buildings, they're putting up swimming pools without permits and stuff like that. There. That's something that has to be done somewhere there else, is, not Con Con. There has, the, uh, and I have seen that in these other towns, but, uh, and I like to take on a lot of things and throw a lot of things at, but I'm trying to <laughs> I know, get I know. one. And but I was just wondering if that, that could be included in this, towns. because these new landowners, a lot of them come from suburbs, I mean from the city. They don't know, they can't mow their grass and throw it out in the woods right there behind them. That's what people do. They throw the, all the stuff in the woods. I thought we had, uh, but, when we had a meeting yeah. with but they, uh, <laughs> our web people, did we put some form together or we were going to put a form on the, the I'd like to see something like that put together. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, we, we had talked saying. about that with Jack. Jackie's Jackie got a version of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah the welcome package. Yeah, yeah. 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 that was part yeah. of the welcome yeah. package. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. So we have a new resident that. letter. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, I, I, you know, off the top of my head, I can't remember what's contained in it, but that's an ideal place for that, George. Yeah. To make sure that, it, you know, any kind of building or or right. any kind of project or otherwise, please call your town. Yeah. Uh, and um, the, the other uh, wetlands are a lot worse this year because of that problem. And, yeah. And we also got these. In fact, I was Saturday. I was on my way home, and the guy is out. Got a new house out there. They dumped the road, dirt out in the road before they went out and was out on the doing the road. I had to stop him. I stopped there and say, "You can't do this. Mm -hmm. You know you can't do this." He built eight or ten buildings in town, but he does what he feels like. How, how do you deal with somebody like that? Right. You know. Yeah, it's it's a process. I know that. Um, oh yeah. Just seeing, we have we have fines, we have cease and desist, and yeah. otherwise, and and I know that we've been exercising those um, some uh, some very recently. But okay. go on, George. Now, then that brings up another issue. Back in, I believe it was 2012 or 13, the town okayed a um, bylaw 
for the for fines and stuff like mm -hmm. that there. An hour later at that town meeting they got this group together that just disbanded it. And it has to do with fines for the, for stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. DEP asked me two weeks ago, where are our bylaws? Mm -hmm. They want us to have bylaws. How do we go about go, going back to looking up that old set of bylaws and have it re-looked at by Schleffman and other people who, because it was already, you know, at that time, it was okay by the lawyers and all that there. And uh, I know it'll probably change, but then somebody says, well, we got, let's get those from Westminster and go through those. And so that's being looked at also. And uh, you know, I, George, like I know to that we um, we we just did a, a comprehensive change. And once it, it was recently, eighteen, nineteen, I think it was yeah. eighteen or nineteen. Nine. We actually had, I want to say, in the warrant, it was at least seven or eight pages of 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 non-criminal disposition yep. and who mm -hmm. has the authority. In other words, you do this, this, and this. The police, you do this, this, and this. Yep. Board of Health. Right. I believe there's something in there to conservation. Yeah, so I'd like to I'd like to kind of work well, with we you need afterwards to, get a to make sure that we've got supported that bylaws for you. Supports part of the EP's laws. Okay. That's what they want us to do, but we, we had it all set up. I forget when it was it was by it was done, I believe it was twelve or thirteen. I, I may I may have that paperwork so I'll, I'll look at <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and see if we can re reevaluate it and see if we can get short sure. get it repassed yeah, or something like that. Take a look and it's, you know, you know, it's, it's not to I, I, I didn't <laughs> Yeah, I, I figured Fred would have something like that. I, I know he, he's very good at looking all that stuff up. And um, you know, I would like to see if it could be at least looked into and see if we can yeah. try to pass some of it to so D E P is satisfied with it so it's uh, George, there's there appetite for, for it. There's appetite right now in town for that because we've had um, a bout of uh, dumping that we've been uh, dealing with. Oh, I know with. you're working on the dumping too. And yeah. so people do want to make sure that we're we're yeah. watching out for the the residents right. that might not yeah, know I, I, or know, and they <laughs> do it anyway. So yeah. the appetite for doing too. this right now <laughs> is, is yeah. it's it's there. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Thank you. Okay, this is, and basically, like I said, there's only three of us right now, and if we could get uh, two, two more members eventually, you know. And uh, we do have one plot in town that we sent to DEP several months ago that they're still looking at. So until we hear from them, we don't know what's going to happen with that particular lot. They have, right, I believe, 12 um, houses or something that they want to put in. Okay. But uh, about, I'll give you a warm on that, see, what, see where they go with that. Great. Uh, anything else? Other than any, that? any questions for George? <laughs> any questions? Don't dump any of your yard waste in his yard. <laughs> that's, the, that's the takeaway. No. Thank you very oh, much. No. You're, you are probably one of the most observant people I know in town. Out on your out on your walks and otherwise, I know that you're watching, so I feel good that oh. you're there. It's, it's interesting when you walk up walking your dog and you see guys building a pool and a deck right there, <laughs> right, right there in the main road. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how can you afford not to say something? <laughs> I appreciate that, George. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, parks and recreation over in the corner. Good evening. Mission. So I guess that's me. Uh, I apologize. I didn't know this was going to be a speaking part, but uh, I'm Chris Lottie. I'm yeah, we, it, you don't have to be put on the spot or otherwise. Just what, whatever you've got going on, or think any any challenges that you need help with. Yeah. So Chris Lottie, I'm the vice chairman of the Recreation Commission, and uh, I just think the big thing is, uh, you know, we haven't been able to have rec programs, you know, over the last year or so because of COVID. Uh, Jan June, uh, July 1st, we had a big change over in our board and some of the officials and stuff like that. Uh, so we're trying to bring our programs back up because, you know, uh, these are good, you know, rec programs are good outlets for kids and, uh, you know, uh, team sports and that sort of stuff. So uh, we were able to successfully put on a soccer program. Uh, and I think we got a lot of kids signed up for, you know, rec basketball too. I think over 170 kids signed up for rec basketball. So we're looking forward to putting on those programs. Uh, you know, get back to softball in the spring, swimming in the summer, and looking at a couple new programs to our, uh, or a couple new offerings to our program. Thanks, Chris. Um, we, we did a study, or um, it was Westfield State? Oh, okay, you've got a copy of the study. So when you say how important those programs are, 
we that study confirmed it. That's the the study said. Not only do we want to see youth programs or otherwise, we want to see a vibrant, you know, uh, all of the different possibilities. Um, and we love the fact that you, you, we're, we're invigorated and we're ready to go. Again, resources are, are a tough thing, so we're trying to match those resources. Make sure you've got great, great playing fields. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Candace Graves. I'm on the Rec Commission. Hi. People call me Candy, and I, this keeps on coming up at our commission, and I would like somebody to be able to answer it to us. We offer fees for some of our programs, mm -hmm. and we are, they put us in the budget, and that kind of limits us because with these fees, we could actually pay for the stipend for the program, but because we're in the budget, it kind of, I don't know if you see what I'm going with it. So, for instance, the uh, soccer program we just had, mm -hmm. she got a stipend from it, which comes out of our budget mm -hmm. that the town has for the rec commission. But we also charge a fee for the program that the families and stuff pay for. It pays for any equipment we have, any shirts, um, anything for the program. And when we do the numbers, we will have enough to pay to actually equivalent that, that stipend. <coughs> And so it keeps us from having more programs by limiting our stuff back to the town budget when because we, we are a fee-based, some of our programs, the way it evolved over the decades, recreation. <laughs> um, obviously, we're not just sports, but we, we moved into this realm where we, and everybody in the other communities and towns, they all, we offer a fee, which helps, you know, get these spearhead, these programs. Without it, we wouldn't be able to do it. But the town is putting us in the budget for for stipends, and so we feel like we're we're um, pigeonholed that we can't do the uh, extra program because of it's not in the stipend. But yet we have the money for the stipend that we generated ourselves and our fees. So we're trying to figure out as a committee how you expect us to um, do extra things, but yet be pigeonholed to the stipend to do the pro you know what I mean? Or are we supposed to be? Like, can we pay for our programs or our stipends? when we hire somebody to be a coordinator like Susie Green was for the um, soccer yeah. program that did a fabulous job or Xavier who's doing the one for the basketball we're paying them for the stipends do we have to you know have this set in our in our budget for our town or can our fees be able to pay for it? Do, you, do you see what I'm trying to go with that? I, I don't I get it. So what, is she say, what she's saying is, is the, the dollars from, the, from that group is going to the general fund? Is that what you're saying? What, I, I, no, it, it goes into a, a rolling count. It yeah. pays yeah. for like balls and if it's and in a rolling account, you should be able to use that. Can use it. Right, but can we use it? So if we so say we decided to do an adult, uh, I don't know, basketball, softball program yeah. in the summer, right? And it's not in the budget. The town didn't vote for it in their budget. Say our budget's um, I don't know, seven thousand dollars or something. It's and we're yeah. 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 the same thing with the, with the um, the referees in our programs and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. We want to be able to pay with the fee I money see. that we generate yeah. Yeah. and yeah. not. Yeah. Sure. I don't. Candy, let's let's let, let, let's let's take right. this. Right, we don't want to be constructed for our for our for our program. Yeah. We want to be able to these, offer as many broad in. recreational programs to the community and to the residents, and we won't want to limit yeah. ourselves yeah. based on the budget, you know, because we can generate most of our own stipends and our own pays for the program because we can we can do it within Build a program. It we right. can figure out Build how many in. kids in a program, how much that we need to pay Rest. for shirts for for the coordinator, for the balls, for the equipment. So we just trying to figure out because it's come up many times in, in our in our in our meetings. Um, I know Chris had you're said seeing the same it as a limitation. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It is. And so I just want to know if the town. I, I looked at other towns to see how they do it, but it's very difficult because like you can look at Lemister, that's a city, so it doesn't help you. Gardner is a city, so when you look at the smaller towns, some of them they do an after school program or they do an art program, and some do do sports. So every town is unique when it comes to rec and what they do and how they use it. Some have a building and they do all kinds of wonderful things and some have a park and, and so everything's different so it's very hard for us. But as, you know, for the budget wise, are we supposed to be limited or can we take it out of our revolving account when we generate it for our fees? You know, we like to have some guidance from the, the select board or who, whoever, you know, whoever can give us the guidance and what we can and cannot do legally. Yeah, I would meet with the town financial team just to, to make sure that if, if, you, if your interpretation of 
budget line items are limiting to what you you're setting your requirements right, right? You, you whether you've got set requirements or you're trying to expand right. which is really what you're talking about to balance that you know, what your requirements are or what your future or possible requirements are meet with the financial team to see if you can't match those resources that you know that you have or if that you have a limitation it sounds just listening to a couple people down here as you as you were talking it it sounds like you don't have a limitation it just it, it's quite possibly just a misinterpretation of what those line items mean to you right yeah go ahead uh, just as a a point of reference that the special legislation that we did to create a parks commission, mm -hmm. a park and rec, you're you're going to get some new uh, parameters and rules and uh, ways to do things that are going to differ, and it's going to expand your ability to do some of the things that you're talking about. Okay, and it's it's really. Uh, once that comes down officially in, in the spring when the board appoints the members to that, uh, you hopefully you will see that we will be able to get the, the guidelines and everything for from the DLS, the Department of Revenue and stuff, and the powers that the, the authority that the Parks Commission has. So that will become clearer, I believe. Okay. And We'll touch upon and give you the ability to do the things that you're talking about, okay. because I just think it's a lack of clarity, yes. or knowing, or or understanding it, or actually just knowing how that stuff works. So I think there's going to be changes coming, and it will be better for you all. Oh, that's beautiful. so. When you yeah. you create revenue, you, right. it can be put in a, a revolving fund, for example, and fund the things and and be self-growing right. and self-sustaining, like you're, you're talking right. about. Yeah. So right. when that comes down officially and stuff, and that'll be towards the spring, uh, when you combine the rec and parks, that will, it's gonna work itself out. But it, it's government and it's Okay, because it was just like, it's been a little, a little bit, bit as we go along <laughs> and we're trying to figure it out and we're like, we're, like you said, we're, lean on we're us. new. It's Candy, that's what I'm saying, to lean on us to, to, for, for those answers. Right. We, we don't want to make, make sure mistakes on the things that we're doing. Like we're trying our best with our meetings, we're trying our best to, to, to do things for the community. Um, you know, we know we serve the community and um, and the recreational needs and stuff but it's it's like it's a learning process for all of us and on our, our commission and we're just trying to figure out how to do everything and just like I said we just felt like it this com this came up many times and nobody seems to know the answer and I figured this well here you guys sure. we could ask the question so I thought yeah. I'd ask the there's been a lot of that tonight so yeah. thank you Candy. Mr. Kappas did you, you have something for us? I did I, I wanted to see how the uh, how the small businesses helped out with the rec department with the basketball. Oh yeah, we had some wonderful businesses come forward. I mean, the hen house, I mean, they came forward. I talked to um, the, um, the um, Lawrence Septic, he says, he goes, I mean, I don't want to say we're here, but he says, do you think the kids would mind if that's on the back? I says, it's it's your business. That's the name of your business. That'd be <laughs> wonderful if you would like to do that. And he told me how about his days and the doing um, sports and stuff. And so it's just, you're seeing them, all of them come back and, and just watching the, what they did in the soccer program, how the kids lit up and how it was such a positive thing and to see the grandparents to come and sit on that sidelines and it just was just wonderful to see everybody back out there and enjoying the season and with the, with the basketball, with the school allowing us to use the gym. It's just it's wonderful to be able to do that no matter what form it is. We're excited about it. I mean, we can't wait. I mean, there's a lot of kids. I mean, we have a few hiccups. But that's expected coming back as our board from, I mean, we basically, I mean, as far as I can tell, we didn't do, I know I'm new to the board, but the commission, I mean, but we didn't have anything last year because of COVID. So being able to do these programs and bring them back and it takes time to bring everything back. So we're really appreciative of the community and residents to let them, but yeah, we had some wonderful businesses. I mean, um, Reno's Pizzeria. I mean, I just couldn't believe some of the ones. I mean, the other day, I was telling somebody, and I said, it's just a, it's an amazing thing to see. I mean, our town has some wonderful businesses, and some of the surrounding towns too. A few of them were on it too, um, so that they've contributed to the teams. They'll be paying. That helps pay for the shirts mm -hmm. for the kids, and they'll be on a banner. And um, 
So it's just wonderful to see the community come together in our surrounding communities because we also let kids from other towns because we have the regional school district to be on our rec program. So it's wonderful to be able to do that. Good. Thank you, Candy. You're welcome. Thank you, Chris. Anything else? Any any other questions for parks? How did it work out for the uh, ski bus? The skis of someone that there used to be a ski program in town, mm -hmm. and it went oh, by the by, and somebody picked it up, so they so brought it to Rec. Erin, we uh, we agreed to pay for a half of the busing for for the students yeah. for the I think it was the middle uh, no the elementary school bus because the middle high school is going to be bussed up on Mondays by the vans. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the elementary school kids are going to go up, I think, on Tuesday to buy the bus that um, the Templeton That's a great department thing. agreed to pay for half of. So It'll come out of our budget. Um, I mean, our revolving budget is a lot. I think they call it, um, just as you know the word, I can't think of the word. Expenditure. Expenditure. It'll be come out as an expenditure. Apparently, I didn't do that right at the last since hey, right, right. <laughs> oh, Last meeting, you guys are doing a great job. I'm trying. <laughs> great job of picking up the, the torch. Yeah. That's awesome. Great. Thanks for bringing that up. Oh, this is you. Sewer Commission, Mark. Yes. How are you? Good. Um, busy, busy. Not really much to say about what's going on down there. Everybody knows what's going on down there. Um, we had a superintendent move on to greener pastures. Um, another, <coughs> another town. So our assistant superintendent moved up. We just hired a new assistant superintendent. Is there anything on going on down there? Um, we we need a new roof. Just like we need a new roof here. It sounds like mm -hmm. it's going around, right? It's a flat roof, which we know flat roofs aren't all that great. But otherwise, everything else is working fine, and there's no problems. It's just business as usual. Right. We ended up in the black. We did. Oh, we ended up in the black. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it's always a good thing. <laughs> uh, the puns, the puns. <laughs> any any, uh, any <laughs> questions for Mark? Sewer <laughs> <laughs> Commission? Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <to the job. laughs> All right, Advisory Committee, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So we'll start? No, you can start. No, okay. You're new with that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we're actually uh, at this uh, at this stage. We're uh, down to four members. We've had a great deal of turnover in just the two months I've been on the board. Um, but I would like to talk uh, at least what's on my mind. And uh, I think I'd like to start by saying, uh, within the past year, I conveyed two properties in the town of Upton. And the reason why I mentioned the town of Upton is um, somebody mentioned that we 91 percent of our taxes is residential and only 9% business. Um, town of Upton, uh, about 30, 35 years ago, uh, they decided to go down the path of, um, of having no industry, uh, really not supporting uh, businesses to industrial parks. And they have about the same size, the town is about the same size as our town. They have a regional school system, so it really very closely mirrors uh, Templeton, except that the, uh, you know, the, me the medium income is double what it is in Templeton. So, um, but uh, having said that, uh, the properties that I conveyed, uh, one was a lot of land, and uh, because it's all built up, that lot of land went for $200,000 and uh, went very quickly for that. And uh, a typical house being built in Upton is in the eight to nine hundred thousand dollar range, and uh, a typical uh, <coughs> property owner pays uh, at least eight thousand dollars a year in taxes, no matter what the size of their home is, eight thousand dollars and up. Uh, the neighboring town, Hawkington, uh, they they decided thirty years ago that they would pursue um, industrial parks, um, and. They built an industrial park, and one of the very first tenants was a company that was uh, known as EMC Corporation, Fortune 500 company, eventually bought out. Uh, their property tax rate uh, over time has been substantially lower. So as you can see, we have a trend, you know, a trend of you know, residential growth over, year, over the years. Uh, it's probably not the best thing for a town in some ways uh, in terms of your individual property taxes. Uh, the other, the other concern that I have, or, or uh, 
but uh, I would certainly uh, ask the advisory board to advise the selectmen is I think there's a real need for a, uh, <coughs> a grants administrator, uh, at least on a part-time basis. Uh, I look at it as it's an investment. Uh, these are traditionally hard sells at town meetings because you're asking to pay a salary for somebody where you won't see the fruits of uh, that investment for a period of years. But um, if you were, if the town was to invest in a grants administrator uh, and, and do that, <coughs> Um, I think that every dollar that you spend would probably, after four or five years, have a return of you know, between five and ten dollars for every dollar that you spend. Um, and I use Gardner as an example. Uh, I, I knew the grants administrator very well, and, and that person, over a period of 20 years, uh, you know, brought millions and millions of dollars to the city of Gardner. And while we're not Gardner, um, I, I just think that that's a direction that we should think about heading in. Thanks, Tom. Can I ask the advisory person something? Sure. Uh, apparently, uh, a month or so ago, you people went and said that we have a slush fund in the Conservation Commission. Uh, it is not a slush fund. It is a fund for Open Space Committee, which is part of our, quote, Conservation Committee. And that money has been spoken for. And it, the, I spoke to the person about it, and it's going back to be worked on. It's for the highway department, a job that the Open Space Committee and the highway was put aside because of COVID. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what just, you didn't ask us what it was about. Why you said we have a slush fund. We do not have a slush fund. George. Okay. I, All uh, our budgets are there. What's in there mm -hmm. is open space. I realize you people probably didn't know open space was part of conservation. That's George, all. Uh, perhaps I, just I do. Know, it, it's not a he said, she said, because I know you got you, you gentlemen were not involved with that. No, we weren't. Okay. However, <laughs> but from a structure perspective, mm -hmm. if you if, if, if you wouldn't mind explaining the the, the how their dollars are actually generated, because I think that's the confusion or why someone would characterize a, a quote-unquote yeah, slush fund. You know, they put it right on their meeting, right on yeah, the, I, I, I understand. I, I, I yeah. apologize, George, I wasn't on at that point, but... No, uh, it was Mr. Springer and... I understand, uh, we, don't need, we don't need to throw names out there. I, I, I totally yeah. understand, but... but just don't so they understood, mm -hmm. they didn't come to us to ask us what it was for. I understood. I, I appreciate the input, and uh, we'll look into that. Michael, thank, thank you, John. I thank appreciate you, it. No, it's, uh, of course we know. I, I know. Yes. I got it. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, so what should Anything else? Uh, I have to leave because okay. my wife no, no problem, has George. Uh, issues. Thank you very, thank you oh, very no much, problem. George. I appreciate Thanks it. Thank you for inviting me. Advisory committee, Andy? I'm, uh, I'm good. Let's okay. see if anybody has any questions. Okay, and um, I think you mentioned you're, you're down a few uh, down a few members. So um, yeah, here's the shout members. out for um, any volunteers out there that would like to be a part of. I know we we use the term legislative body, but the advising body, the body that uh, of, of uh, residents up to seven residents that can really help uh, yeah. shape financial and fiscal matters. Absolutely. I'm sorry, go ahead. Just, sir. just a quick follow up to Cheryl's sure. point about the grant. One example where that could benefit Tumpkin is Rich Curtis, and we pay him the big bucks, zero. But he generates about $6,000 a year in grant funding since he's been yeah. overseeing the emergency management. And we uh, employ a community opportunities group, or we have in the past, and they have done our just pretty much our CDBG grant, and the last one was 700 and something thousand. But right. in that grant, we get sometimes we get pegged in with like other like communities, how it works, but we'll get pegged in so. like Lemonster as far mm -hmm. as criteria for the grant and stuff, right. which makes it hard mm -hmm. and it's very competitive. But you don't get the money if you don't ask, and the way you ask is you fill out all them forms that's just and you have to know how to fill them out mm -hmm. because I can fill out the form and send it in and get turned down, and somebody who knows how to do it. I don't know, the right lingo to put in there and how to answer particular questions, we get it. And other communities do. They get $400,000 to go for a fire truck. They get $200,000 for this or that. So your point is well made and it is worth the investment. Even And we, we did look at that too. I think it was when you were in office before, Jeff, that we uh, it was we interviewed a guy from uh, Phillips, I believe, 
grant writer. I don't, we never did anything with it, but I mean, we yeah. did try to go down that road. But again, it's kind of a hard sell to, to put somebody on a salary based job that you can't see the mm -hmm. fruits of their work until, you know, five, six years down the road, potentially, or at least yeah. three years down the road. Yeah, it's, yeah, you're not going to see next, within a year. No. You know, it's going to take no. a year or two before you see. That's right. Anything. But you have to do spend a little money. It's not a lavish. You'll spend some money to make some, and it is, your point is well taken. Yeah. I'll put in a sure. plug for Grant Ryder. The MMA, uh, I just happened to see an article that you you put in a grant now, and the way they change their system is it not only goes for the grant you apply for, but it can meter, put, mm -hmm. meter itself out. They distribute it out to see if it would fit the criteria for any other grants that are out there that are similar. So yeah, you just, you have one grant that goes in, but that grant also gets filed with, filed into, or set, set up, well, I don't know, I'm sorry for the lack of words, no, but it gets yeah. sent out. Or one application. One application, sort of, yeah. and they, they yeah, see how many it'll all fit. All yeah. It's a fit for all the other things. Yeah, but again, if it's a fit for anything else. You need to know how to fill those grants out, to word it in a such that it will be more effective as a feeder thing. It goes for one thing, but if they're going to shell it out over here, you need to, you really do need to fill it mm -hmm. out in, in a particular way. It just and I like to give a plug out too. Again, for Rich Curtis and his grant ability, uh, not just that, but also the Chief Bennett. He does some great grant writing as well, and so does the fire chief. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yep. just don't be mm -hmm. disillusioned that the town's Adam. not getting any grants. I mean, I, if I tallied up the amount of grant money that's coming to this town on an annual basis, I mean, I'm sure it's pretty significant based on the departments that are out there to include, I think, Bob Sozik. Uh, I, I mean, Adam's on the ball. Uh, Adam's same with on you. The, ball. Uh, the, the roads and, uh, and the other grants that need to be, uh, need to be touched upon. But I, I think as a whole, as a community, I, there's a lot of people Justice that are, uh, department heads that are actually writing grants today uh, that are getting some dollars. Justice even filled one out already, and he's only been with us for like a month. He's working on one right now. He's working on another one. And Holly. Folks, we only and have Holly three Jean, three left. Okay. And, and, and we're, 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 we're looking great. Advisory oh. committee, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Steve, any, uh, any, uh, any words other than we need people to join you? Sure. Um, yes. So, <laughs> the Naval Department was brought in under the as a town department a couple of years ago by the oh. previous town administrator. It used to be run solely by the Cable TV Advisory Committee. I don't know if people know this, but it's not official right now. None of none of us have been reappointed to it. So I've worked the past couple of years with Brian Tangway of the Historical Society and Pat Gale from Cultural Council, and they've been great to help me. Pat also helps with our Facebook page and kind of use them as advisors. So it's been on more of an informal basis. But um, the cable TV department, which runs TCTV, we're doing really well. This month we got a big sponsorship deal that we're working on. Right now we're just having a hard time keeping up with that, everything. And we're in a good position to get a lot more of that. So I think we can really start earning money on our own and not rely on the cable subsidy or the streaming subsidy that the state's trying to set up as well. And, it's, um, and we're also developing a regional website so that we can offer businesses in the community and others a platform out there, it's going to be called Montachusa TV, and we should also be able to use that as a revenue stream to sell business memberships throughout the entire region. The trick is, that's a lot of work. Yeah. And we have a staff of part-time people, and so right now we're still training a couple of it. Hannah and Caitlin are my rocks right now. Uh, they're solid, and we got to bring a couple more people along, and hopefully we'll be able to send out crews to do video production jobs. Sorry, I'm waving my hands okay. <laughs> and, uh, and and do some other things that people will need in, in the region. So um, it's not a bad thing not to have a cable TV advisory committee. Sometimes they go dormant when you're in between negotiations with Comcast, usually in a 10-year contract. We're in year four of a 10-year contract right now. So sometimes they go dormant 
and they're they're normally used for the cable ne uh, negotiations with Comcast. And if you ever want to bang your head against the wall, <laughs> negotiate a, con a contract with Comcast. Oh. You can negotiate about three things. It takes three years. <laughs> they don't get back to you a lot. And you, and you haggle over it. And we'll be haggling over stuff this time. Um, so we've re used the absence of this official committee as a way to just, you know, I get good advice from people on the outside. And if we do revise it, um, I would say, you know, rethink it because it's not running the TV station anymore. It's there at, in an advisory capacity, say, for the contract or as an adjudicating board if someone gets mad at me or some of the decisions we make and, you know, we do a show on juggling John and he doesn't like the time slots he's in, <laughs> he should be able to go to a board and say, Steve's being unfair to me help and they can make a decision but ultimately they're an advisory committee to the select board so right now you're my adjudicating board <laughs> um, and and that's fine too so any way we want to work it I mean that's not up to me um, and I'd like to see people get on economic development yep. corporation yeah. one person and we can have meetings <laughs> so one person right, that's my take. slide. So that's all I have for tonight. Thank you very, Thank much, you very much, Steve. I appreciate that. Uh, capital improvements. Um, Justin, any, any updates? or We're looking through. All the presentations have been made. We've seen our initial list of all the requests. We have about 10% of what we really need to fund everything, and we're going through and figuring out what are some alternative and potential alternative financing options and how are we going to prioritize. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll be finalizing that, getting our report done, because we have to have that in before the end of the month and present it to the board by early January. So the, the committee is chugging along. There's a lot of work being done. Great. Thank you, Justice. Thank you, Holly, and all the other members we have. Tom and Justice John. has been a godsend creating a spreadsheet for us that a whole bunch. Excellent. All right, any questions for capital improvements? Folks, we are almost done. CPC, looks like we don't, uh, George, George left, um, but uh, we appreciate their efforts. No, there are no slush funds. <laughs> no. It's from taxation, no. it's money that we use to uh, for many different projects. Um, and they enable a lot of really good people. Uh, their work enables a lot of good things in this community. I am so excited uh, for Baldwinville uh, when that housing comes in and they, they refurbish that school. It's going to be a great thing for our community. Uh, Senior Center Oversight Committee. Um, I know we need the roof, but uh, we did dissolve that, that committee uh, in our foul town meeting. Uh, thanks for anyone that might have been involved with that. Uh, Cultural Council. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Lisa Hi. Dembeck. I'm the chairperson for the Cultural Council. Um, Save the best for last. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, this is my first time doing this. Um, yeah, it's a great council to be on. You give free money away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people fill out grants and we review them. And as a committee, we, you know, pick and most of the times we we pick them all because you know we try to spread the money around and um, bring as much culture to the area as we can um, I can't say enough about Pat Gale she's amazing she's a, a mentor she's the treasurer she's been on this council off and on and uh, our council is a fairly new council um, most of our members like myself have um, are new to it and um, I'm here today to just let people know that we really do need members because we have some people that are potentially going to age out and you can only um, it's a three-year term when you um, apply and participate and uh, a lot of the uh, members stay on for six years so then you have to sit out for a year and then you can come back so we have a lot of um, people that do come back because they they miss it they enjoy it so um, this pat Obviously, uh, 2020 was uh, a bad year for um, arts and entertainment and culture. Uh, but this past year, we were able to take uh, 20, 
2020's money and 2021's money and combined it and <coughs> every grant that um, uh, applied uh, was awarded uh, in, in some capacity and we also were able to um, have a few concerts on the common this year mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the, the library uh, the, uh, the farmers market the senior center and we kind of hit it all the schools um, and and you know the grants they they come to us so it's kind of interesting and uh, we even had a 15 piece jazz band on our common this year that was amazing not many people have the pleasure to see that and to actually they all drove from Western Mass wow. and we had a it was more cars for them than I think attendees at the time because it was a Wednesday night but um, it was great it was wonderful so um, yeah so thank you for you know if anybody wants to be a member and uh, everybody at Town Hall is always so helpful for us um, and it's that's it. Lisa thank you so much And just a kind of a, a comprehensive list of some of the other ones that are out there, um, whether they're meeting. Um, I know that I'm involved with the Open Space Committee and just be, uh, COVID, we just have not had the chance to, to, to meet. Um, scholarship Committee, I know that, um, Chris, you sit on the Scholarship Committee. We've got many, many members and a lot of, lot of uh, good work. Yep. Yeah. Yes, um, and we had to get some clarity um, in regards to uh, a few different things, quite frankly, mm -hmm. um, with monies not being able to be utilized. And so now that uh, I'm just waiting for the chair uh, to, to reconvene, and that will I have I've done my homework. I was given homework. <laughs> so um, <laughs> give the superintendent. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but uh, we're just we just haven't had a chance to meet yet. I know okay. that uh, the chair is very busy. And, um, I believe she's a. Um, she works in another uh, another town, but I, I want to say that she's the treasurer. Okay. But she's been going through some type of audit, so we're we're going to be we'll be patient. Great. Yeah. So I just put that up there just to let uh, whether we have representation tonight uh, or otherwise. But just some of those other committees that, that that are out there. If anyone had any questions, Mr. Chair, I think the stormwater committee. I think that was dissolved. I believe. Okay. I believe. I okay. Yep. The 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 um, scholarship committee is that just for an Narragansett um, uh, students, and, and so is that a town committee? Do uh, is any of our um, homeschoolers or um, any of them uh, able to or school choice from our communities? Are they able to right. apply? So the application process is what you're. Uh, I'm closing my eyes to try to memorize the actual uh, um, charter, but I believe it. Is for children, uh, for students who live who live in Templeton, and I don't. I'll have to get back to you. I do not know. That's what I do it not. Always was. I don't it's remember if curious. it has something to do right. with. I tried to get school. the answer years ago when Justice was in school, and nobody could ever. So if he could apply, because yeah, he had to to my he had things out to a different school district. To my knowledge, it was tied to the craft fair and the kids that. So there was a scholarship. And my children were eligible, eligible because I was on cert and before I was on cert. If you volunteered, I used to cut vegetables. If you volunteered your hours for the craft fair, they were logged over the years. And you could start when your kids were in first grade and work all the way through till they were in high school at the craft fair. Your hours were logged. And when they applied for a scholarship, they had to go the first semester of college and submit their grades and the receipt that they attended the first semester. And then they would get a check anywhere from four hundred dollars up. Yeah. So that let's same, let's count that, that as a do out for this. And that would have yeah. been everybody oh, got practice. an email. Yeah. Everyone got uh, even if you if I, I know um, Lisa, you said you did not get the email? No, I didn't. Okay, we want to make sure that we add Lisa to the, the email. But everybody should have got the, the slides and the notifications. What I'd like to do is, um, I know I've I've got I've taken quite a few notes uh, during the meeting. Um, in my profession, we call them the do outs. So um, I'm, I'm recording that as a do out for the scholarship committee okay. charter okay. so that everyone winds up having that in their hands, not just 
one person, but the, the, everyone that came tonight, all the email addresses that uh, that we've used, and right. we'll just make sure that we and add, it wasn't add, just add Lisa, uh, add Lisa down Because I think some residents, like especially the ones that have students that do school choice, it wasn't, or they do homeschool, they would probably want to know how it works. It wasn't just for the kids, them. it was for adults too. Adults, yeah. Yeah. oh, so, well, so let's it's Let's not speculate, let's, yeah, let's, let's just okay. get that chart. Okay, we'll get that. Okay. <laughs> okay. That sounds um, good. Great. Yeah. All right, folks, it is 8.30 that we've been uh, hanging out together for about two hours now. Um, I apologize for being way over my, my time mark, but I will tell you, I believe it is time well spent. Um, we, we had a, a lot of things, a lot of action items tonight, a lot of collaboration that we've uh, accomplished, a lot of ideas. Um, a couple concerns that people uh, needed to be, be able to ask direct questions about, and I, and I think that, that is, um, I think that we did a good job uh, staying professional and, and being able to, to do that to make sure where those uh, those challenges are um, in the interest of time or otherwise if, if anyone had any open forum items I, I'd like to entertain those now everyone's thinking about taking on the pizza and the, the pig yeah. okay. <laughs> so folks I from the bottom of my heart and on um, behalf of the select board I, I thank you very much for coming tonight uh, it was a great showing and a lot of really good conversation I hope to see you all throughout the year and we'll see you about this time next year we will check the Patriots schedule before yeah. <laughs> thank you all thank you thank you all right. we are adjourned thank you very much. I think we always come up with the same thing.